Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Cumberland Roundtable where we are taking a look at our scripture for the week which uh, Samantha eloquently preached on um, Sunday for Mother's Day which was Psalm 23. So we're going to take a look at that and have some discussion and some reflection on it. Um, just kind of let it marinate and see what, what pops up from it and we hope that you will join with us in our reflection and that you'll have reflection that you can in turn share with us so we can all grow in this together. So um, I'm going to ask for Victor to open us up in prayer. And as soon as he's done, I'm going to ask um, Matt to read Psalm 23 for us and we'll get started. Won't you join us? Let's pray. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. We need you to help us find our way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley... I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right. Let's see. Um, Matt, why don't you start? You want me to start? I do okay. want you to start. Um, so, Samantha talked about, you know, this scripture is one that we hear at funerals all the time. And uh, I have to admit, as a kid, I felt a little bit guilty because I'd be at a funeral and I'd hear this scripture. And my image of what God was in this scripture was Sam the Sheepdog <laughs> from Wile E. Coyote, a.k.a. Ralph Wolf. Morning, Ralph. Morning, Morning Sam. Sam. As they were clocking yeah, in and out. Clocking out right? um, and, I, and it's just kind of funny to think back about that, but there were some things about it that, you know, um, Sam the sheepdog, a lot of times seemed like he wasn't paying attention, but he always knew what was going on with his flock. Mm. He was always looking out for their best interest. He always was keeping an eye on his enemies, on the sheep's enemies, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I went back and I looked. Chuck Jones is the guy who created Sam the Sheepdog. And I looked at his bio, his personality thing he created for Sam the Sheepdog. And this mm -hmm. is what he wrote. He's big and slow, but vigilant and ready with a counter for enemies saying his, uh, with a counter for enemies eyeing his flock. He very rarely runs and tends to be sedentary in his movements. He does, however, possess sufficient strength to incapacitate enemies when needed. And I, when I read that, I thought, man, how many times have I looked at God and thought, God, you're just so too slow in moving on things. You know, and sometimes as a church, I feel like sometimes we're slow about moving on things mm -hmm. and reacting to things. And I, you know, so we kind of define God that way sometimes, or we picture God that way. Or how many times have we said, uh, we think maybe that God's not really paying attention to what's going on in our lives. Well, God, how could you let that happen? Out of all the stuff I've done and been a part of, how could you let that happen in my life? You know, and, and so... I think sometimes our image of God is that one of that he can be slow moving or he may not be paying attention to our lives personally. Um, and that's really not the case um, because it also says that Sam the sheepdog was vigilant when looking after his flock. Isn't that true of God too? He's vigilant when he's looking after us, his, his flock. Um, I, Sam, I know that if you press like any sort of imagery like that too far, that it falls apart. At some point, if we keep looking for sure. details of God and Sam the sheepdog, it'll, it'll fall sure. apart. Right? Like hopefully God's not clocking out at the end of the day. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but there's other stuff that act in those cartoons that stand up really well that that makes me think of like it's not always instantaneous. Sometimes Wally Coyote has the sheep in his clutches and is making off with the sheep almost gone mm -hmm. or over the next hill before Sam 
shows up where he is and clobbers him and takes the sheep back. Yep. So there's this sense of we can be down the trail some mm-hmm. of things that we wish we were out of or want yes. deliverance from, and it doesn't mean that God's not paying attention. Yeah. Right. In the same kind of. Injury. I think my favorite episode had to be where um, they were clocked out and they were walking home or whatever, and Sam puts his arm around Ralph and says been a rough day. Why don't you stay home tomorrow? I'll take care of both jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that not true for our guy too? I mean, he's capable. You just take the day off. I got you covered. You know? Will one of y'all say that to me when we leave tonight? <laughs> like, just take care of my job. Anyway. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we've, talk, on. we've talked about my view of, of uh, God in the Psalm in Psalm 23, uh, you know, a kid, uh, but as an adult, I like... Uh, I don't know where I even read it or where I talked about it in the discussion. The focus was on the first five words. The Lord is my shepherd. And two things that stood out about that was, one, the word is. It's present tense, meaning that uh, God is still active and engaging in our lives and is here right now. No matter where you're at, is. That's present tense. God is here with you right now. Um, and I think that it's important for us to remember that. The other part of that that really stood out to me is the word my, because in this particular usage of it, it, it seems very intimate, very personal. But to say that the Lord, and as you would say, the, you know, the God of the cosmos, is my shepherd. Wow. It's very personal. That's very intimate. Um, and I've, as I've read that scripture numerous times, that's what always catches my mind now when I'm at a funeral, the adult I'm at a funeral, mm-hmm. uh, doesn't picture Sam the sheepdog, but pictures my, is, my. Two simple words, but that's what stands out to me when I see Psalm 23 now. Okay. All right. Samantha? Uh, so I thought from a Christian educator standpoint, and I did touch on this in my sermon when I talked about, you know, like that we only tend to offer Psalm 23 appreciation at a funeral. Um, So I guess the Christian educator in me would want to encourage us not to take any particular scripture for granted. Like there are particular scriptures that have like this cultural significance almost like 1 Corinthians 13 is always going to be read at a wedding, but it sits in the middle of a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Like, you know, do we do we understand why? Do we do we look at that letter and wonder what Paul meant it for in its original context, or do we just assume like, yeah, it's going to be read before these two people take their vows? Right. Mm-hmm. Or like John 3:16. I mean, like probably the best known verse in all of Scripture. And I just wonder, like, back to the wall, can you tell me what story that comes from? Like, can you tell me who Jesus is talking to when, he's, when, he, when no, he says that? No, but I can tell you it was the third inning, and the guy had one of those uh, rainbow afros on that was holding the sign, right? And if you look back at my pictures on Facebook, you'll see me doing that. So, <laughs> that train of all places. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so we... We just take particular verses or portions of scripture and attribute them to certain things, funerals, weddings, mm-hmm. <laughs> pop culture. <Right>. Um, <laughs> and I, don't, I would not want us to take for granted what might be there for us just as people who are continuing to try to grow in faith. Mm-hmm. So my encouragement would be like, don't just, oh, I'm doing some Bible study and oh, it's the 23rd Psalm today. Yeah, I got that. I mean, I know that. So I've heard it my whole life. Right. right. And it, isn't it funny, too? And I read it um, from the NRSV. And even when I was preparing for my sermon, I noticed that I would type, like, the NRSV says, uh, even though I walk through the darkest valley. But there were. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Yes. Of death. I had to go back and edit out. Like, if you want to type that way, Samantha, you're going to have to read it from the King, King James, James version. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because that's how we know yes, it, even, right. you know? Like, uh-huh. right. so. Yeah, my encouragement as a Christian ed- educator would be. Which is interesting because at that point, is it is it scripture or is it literature for us? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. To, to even have a specific translation that is so ingrained. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Because it's yeah. the uh-huh. most poetic. I always uh-huh. do it with the end. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because NRSV really yeah. messes with me there because surely my goodness and mercy. Yeah. yeah. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. No, it's forever. <laughs> it is forever, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at me flexing my translation <laughs> skill. <right? It> is, <laughs> um, I know because when Meemaw said it, <laughs> from memory, it was. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I right. think that that's, that's probably a pretty good reflection for us to have. It also would be a neat way from a from a um, teaching, like certainly in our homes or uh, even an evangelism standpoint, is to kind of, wouldn't it be a neat exercise for us to study some of these colloquial ways that we use scripture mm -hmm. and kind of bone up on the context and use that as, you know, when you're at the reception, hey, did you hear that, uh, did you hear that bit from, from, Corinthians 13? Yeah. Did you know? And now you have what like, you get to have a conversation about that. <laughs> or maybe you're sitting next to the guy, you pass down the hot dog and the And the, you get caught again. And, and the big beer and down the line and you go, you know John three sixteen there. Uh, the context of, And you yeah, get no, caught again. Not. <laughs> not a it might be for somebody. If you get a chance to use it, let me know how it goes. I, yeah. I also, from a youth kind of standpoint, I looked at that verse, verse one, yeah, no, verse two, he makes me lie down in green pastures, um, and I wonder how often we make our kids lie down, like how often we make them rest, uh, the psalmist, I think, Obviously, from my sermon, I think words are intentional. So when the psalmist said, makes me, I don't think the psalmist just means like, you know, he lets me. Or um, <laughs> God encourages me to lie down. Like the psalmist says, makes me. Uh, Exodus tells us that we're commanded to rest. And I just look at teenagers and they're so overscheduled. And uh, sometimes it breaks my heart for them. And I just wonder, as adults, how we contribute to that. I wonder, as the church, how we contribute to We're that. We're probably modeling that for them. <laughs> oh, for sure. So. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think even as a parent, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, sure, do it all. We'll do yeah. it. Um, but I wonder, I wonder how we make young people find rest or make them practice Sabbath. That's something that I really struggle with personally mm -hmm. finding rest and finding Sabbath and making mm -hmm. time for that because you know in our world there's always one more thing there's always some mm -hmm. other need there's always this other thing that need, should take our attention and um, I've become convicted of the modeling of it because I don't want my kids to see this I have a propensity to be a workaholic anyway mm -hmm. now you add like this shepherding motif to it mm -hmm. and the layer of I'm doing this for God like I don't want to mm -hmm. ha halfway do that right mm -hmm. you know I want to bring my a-game to this but I have been convic convicted uh, one of the things that came up in my little time away my little mini sabbatical was you are straight up modeling for your kids Corey that being busy all the time is like a holy thing and I immediately was like, well, that's ridiculous. Being busy. Busyness is not a holy thing. If anything, it's an idol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, how are your kids supposed to be able to tell the difference when you miss stuff all the time and you miss family things and you don't do stuff because, you know, you don't have, you didn't have time for your family's thing because you were helping another family with their family thing. Mm -hmm. Like, those are really weird messages mm -hmm. to be sending to your kids. And, and like, I'm trying. Like, I can't, I don't, I don't know what it looks like in a not ministry family, but I'm, they've got their own versions of that. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, I, I happened to watch a little video promo for FCA. Um, and, I, and I clicked on it because it was a young lady who had graduated from the high school uh, that, we, that we just moved from. And she's a college athlete. And she, she was kind of sharing some testimony. And she said, you know, I've played softball my whole life. And, and it wasn't until I got to college and was playing at a, a D1 school that I realized I put my whole value and identity and worth into myself as an athlete, as a softball player. And um, she just kind of shared a little bit about the crisis of faith that that became mm -hmm. for 
Well, the adult version of that is, and I'm guilty of it, like my whole value or I taught, all of my goodness comes from my work. Sure. And so, so now we are imposing it on kids who are athletes or in the band or in the or FFA dance, or whatever. Or, yeah, yes, yeah. fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. But we shape them unintentionally to think that their value, identity, and worth is tied up in all of that. So then when you strip it all away, that's What's when, a, yeah, that's when a person, a young person, an adult person has mm-hmm. a real crisis of faith because I have tied all of my value and worth up in this. And, and now... And not into my identity as a child of God yes. in a relationship. With so when that yeah. young person finishes her four years of college and softball is no longer mm-hmm. that major part of her life. Mm-hmm. What do I do? Yeah. That's a that's a big mm-hmm. that's a, or when you retire or a big or, letdown. I mean, or kind empty of nest, empty nest, empty yeah. nest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If your kids end up being the things yeah. that get your yeah. worship, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So involved in their life, the focus of your life is all around them. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, well, I think it's worth praying for God to intercede in our lives and mm. and make us to lie down. Yeah. Well, and make just didn't make the sermon. Like, it was right. one of those words that I had made a bunch of notes on and thought a lot about yeah. and it just didn't sure. flow. So, sure. aren't we lucky we have a round table? Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Indeed. Here, here. Huzzah. <laughs> yeah, because that is really one of the things that stuck out to me is that the, the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. It's because we desperately need rest. We desperately need time off from ourselves our stuff I mean we need that um, but I want to I want to rewind back to the Lord is my shepherd and I see that text and the imagery of that text the Lord is my shepherd it really makes no sense without the second part of the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want mm. it's because the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not buy into our culture's need of wanting more and more and more and more. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I, I shall not buy into my life is, um, my worth is, is tied up in my busyness. I mean, some folks find that as a, a bragging point. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that I'm busy. I'm just busy all the time. Well, I can't do this. I'm busy. Um, People also use that when they're trying to approach pastoral staff often because they'll be like, hey, I'm sure you're really busy, comma, but I have this thing. It's <laughs> like, you know, you must be all kinds of busy like I'm all kinds of busy. Like it's even... They put it on you. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Like, so, so oh, almost here. like, yes, I will make time for you. You're, I, right. I opened the door, did not come. On. I answered the phone. It's not like I don't see the caller ID. Like, if I was too busy, I wouldn't. Have, you know, yes. What, what, what can I do for you? You know. And I, I mean, it is a command, like Samantha said uh, from Exodus, and it's it's a command here. It's like He's making me. God makes me do this because we need it. I wonder how many of us struggle with the idea of just lying down at night and being able to let our minds shut down mm-hmm. because of everything that's racing through our minds. I mean, if we ask for a show of hands on a Sunday morning, how many of you had a good night's rest last night or your mind was still racing? And, and really a lot of hands that's up, what this, I feel like. This you know? psalm is, is for. Uh, mm-hmm. this, this psalm, I mean, we talk about it, as Samantha said in her sermon, which is really good, just was, was really powerful and may, has made me think a lot but the psalm is often in funerals that's where we hear it Um, and but if you ask the Hebrew people (laughs) which we can't go back in time to do but but one of the reasons why this text is written is because they spend their night tossing and turning because of what they had done or left undone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this text is for those who are scared. 
that have a fear of not having enough, not providing enough for my family, not being pretty enough or being smart enough or, or just not doing what we think that we should be doing. Or worried about our finances or worried yes. about our health or worried about our messed up relationships or worried like it keeps mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this is a quote Hebrew folks long ago who longed to live with God but their lives just became too hard we become too afraid to keep believing that our shepherd is leading us to green pastures or that goodness and mercy will follow us I'm going to say that our lives become too hard over booked or we become too afraid to believe that our shepherd is leading us to green pastures how often do we 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 do that mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. and, and and the more busy you are the worse it is but there's the illusion of some sort of control because you're always toiling yeah that when you are just wore out now you're left with okay I don't have anything for this this mm -hmm. is beyond what I can do mm -hmm. back a, a few years ago before the pandemic um, there was a uh, church shooting and if y'all remember there were a lot of churches now really struggling okay what do we need to do in response mm -hmm. of this and and uh, I know churches became consumed with how are we going to keep our people safe mm -hmm. and um, anything from like wanting to put padlocks or put those um, uh, oh, those you use a key card to come oh, yeah. into the church or you lock the doors when worship is happening all this stuff. We become so consumed in our fear, and we started making decisions out of fear. And that's one of the things that I always try to urge folks. I'm, I'm, do not respond out of fear. And we do that often. Our, and that leads us, I mean, gets us in trouble. Is 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 like the whole, like, end of times. You know, when, when, when people start talking about the end of times, people go and they buy everything they can and, and they store it up, and, and, but they're doing it out of fear. Yeah. Out of yeah. fear of what's going to happen, and we should never act out of fear or out of response to what, what mm -hmm. has happened in our lives. Make those quick judgment decisions. It's like, okay, we've got to do this because this person reacted this way in my life. Or in, and it, we that, get in trouble that's when, with that. That's when we need to be made to be laying down. <laughs> Besides just the go lay waters. down. That's the point. Just go lie down. Yeah. Just. The Lord knows that sometimes we just need a nap. <laughs> and some, yeah. Think of some of the harsh things that's been said to you or that you've said to other people. They probably could have been abated if, 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 you, just had, if you just had a nap. <laughs> that's... It, I mean, maybe, maybe a little nosh, a little something to eat when you wake up, like, <laughs> right. you know, like, you know, like those Snickers commercials where you're hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, like, but, but the Psalms, they describe, if we read them, they describe the despair of being a people who get scared, a people who lose their way. But most importantly, a God who searches to find God's lost sheep. Because we get scared, we lose our way, and their God is constantly leading us back. In care of us. Yeah. With us. God with us. God mm. through. And then, as Samantha pointed out Sunday, like the, your rod and your staff, and that being, um, using that in terms of the church being, we're, we're the rods and the staff helping guide people guide back and protect others. Yeah. Yeah. and I think from a missions outreach viewpoint that is 
the church is at, at its best and when we're helping care for and when we're letting the church help care yeah. for uh, care for us. One of the things that I appreciated uh, from your sermon was the exercise that you had with us for you had picked out these words that that spoke to you mm -hmm. in the scripture kind of a almost like a mini Lectio Divina kind of a yeah. exercise right mm -hmm. like ooh, this is the word that mm -hmm. spoke. this is what popped out mm -hmm. to me and then invited the, the congregation for us to share um, the words that popped into us and it was it was interesting like you can't be wrong with it it's just right. how, how the Lord's speaking to you mm -hmm. through right. scripture that day and um, I've really reflected on that and I in in the service for me it was the um, the the restoration part mm -hmm. um, that he restores my soul because mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm in a restoration phase where that is my prayer that is what I'm seeking that is what I'm concerned with a lot is Lord I've been busted up in a lot of ways help make me whole so mm -hmm. that tends to be where I am but mm -hmm. uh, reflecting. Uh, at home later thinking on that and trying to keep uh, right after that the the even though um admits acknowledges in the text um it's not that the world's not going to be fraught with danger mm -hmm. it's not that there is not a valley of the shadow of death it's even though there are these things mm -hmm. like that's really important to me because I think that a lot of times churches tend to do the pie in the sky by and by thing and everything's upbeat and you know the TV pastors where everything is like I call it sunshine and kitten hugs <laughs> you know big smile and everything's gonna, we're going to have this resolved here in the next next 30 minutes and uh, by the way, don't forget to give. Call this number. <laughs> Call this number. We'll send you out a hanky that we've blessed with holy water. I can get you a brick. Yeah. The church, I mean. Yeah. Right. Um, the and in the Bible Belt, we either play the fear card or we play the don't worry. Like the don't. The reason I don't like the don't worry about it. Like no kidding. Like, I don't want to worry about it. I'm not choosing to worry about it. It's, it's what's happening because of my situation. Yeah. Right. So it's flippant to be like, oh, it's going to be okay. It was, and to me, that's like cutting out the, if you took the valley of the shadow of death verse out of here, if you took verse 4 out, this isn't Psalm 23 anymore, right? right? That imagery is very <laughs> powerful and is much a part of, sure. of it's why we read it at funerals. Yeah. We're here yeah. in the midst of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fear this evil. We don't have to fear death. Why? Because God is with us the whole way. The mm -hmm. shepherd is there, which yeah. is a big deal too. Uh, shepherd, yeah. shepherd being a, a a term that Eastern kings referred to each other as. Same. Mm -hmm. So David, who this is attributed to mm -hmm. as the psalmist um, for Psalm twenty three, is is a king who is in himself referred to as a shepherd uh -huh. who has charge over these people who is writing about the shepherd of even the shepherd the shepherd's shepherd mm -hmm. the one that's over mm -hmm. us all and and i just like the honesty in it it's one of the things that i appreciate about the psalms in general is like you know when when we are lamenting by yeah. golly we are lamenting you know <laughs> yeah. you know we are not making it genuine we are touch. not making it nice for yeah. uh -huh. you know i used to when i was a kid i watched uh, on sunday nights there would be like the abc sunday night movie uh -huh. and and it would start at like seven and it ended at 10 but my bedtime was like at 8 30. so i saw the beginning to like 700 <laughs> movies and have no idea how they ended um but they would say they would always say every time it came back on these have been edited to make it suitable for tv right uh -huh. it, the Psalms does not edit right. these experiences right. to Absolutely. make it PC and nice. Like, yeah. if it's gut wrenching, horrible, and gross, <laughs> the psalmist says, I am in this gut wrenching, horrible, gross, nasty situation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, particularly mm -hmm. because I think the church likes to, to whitewash and make things just so simple. Yeah. Yeah. We have this beautiful sanctuary, we have this beautiful architecture. 
Uh, we've got, you know, we got folks that dress all over the board, and, but a lot of folks take it very seriously, mm -hmm. especially in the South, raised to dress super nice for church, right? You bring mm -hmm. our best for God. So you've got all this nice that mm -hmm. visually, socially expected that doesn't resonate with what's on the inside. Or it m may be worse, it makes you feel somehow like a failure because you look around and you think, Everybody else, else seems to have it together. together yeah. <laughs> oh, so fake it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I appreciate a church here. Yeah. A faith here that represents honestly. Mm -hmm. Um. This isn't this isn't faking it. That's why that even though mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. big deal to me. Mm -hmm. Because well, look at all the stuff that happens before the even though. You've got the being led, uh, you know, be, your thirst quenched at the quiet waters, the still waters. You've got the being guided in the paths of righteousness, which is as much a discipleship thing mm -hmm. as anything mm -hmm. else, right? If it was that easy, you wouldn't need the guide. Right. <laughs> Hello. Um, and then we've got the, the passing through the valley of the shadow of death. You've got the rod and the staff of protection that brings the comfort. We've got, a, we've made these declarations, and we may have those that would speak ill of it and be our enemies for this relationship that we have with the shepherd. But we got a feast prepared mm -hmm. in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. They stand around you and taunt, and we can have a party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is powerful, real stuff, and that cup, or the, the cup overflowing. I loved your imagery about the, so when you're, go ahead and, Turn her head up and take oh, the oil. oil. Mm -hmm. I thought that oh was just, gosh. that was really powerful for me. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really appreciate the, the honesty of it. I appreciated the way that you dealt with the honesty of it and the ickiness of things and the response to it in the scripture. And yeah, we better quit. I promised mm. that I would watch the <laughs> There's time one better. More. Nope. No. Just a little. No. Just a little. I will give you 13 seconds. Got it. Okay. The hope in this text is not in in the sheep's vision of the shepherd okay it's in it's in the shepherd's vision of the sheep because the lord is my shepherd because the lord wants to shepherd me mm -hmm. i shall not fear because because god wants to save me i shall lie not yeah. because I'm a savable, not because I've earned it, not because I have any of these intrinsic or extrinsic it, values. It's the whole, if we want to, God so love the world. Mm -hmm. God, I mean, God's love for us, it, it's because of God, how God views Corey, how God views me and Smith and Matt and all y'all. I mean, it's, it's in that we shall not fear. Well, we are thankful for God's initiative to love us and to extend us such grace and mercy. And we're thankful for you joining with us today and hope that whatever format it is that you're receiving this, please comment, mm -hmm. reflect. We love it. We're getting tons of text, phone calls, instant messenger um, on Facebook. We get flock note. We get emails. We want to hear from you. If you're coming to the picnic tonight, yeah. we'd love to talk about it then. Sure. We love this yeah. stuff. Absolutely. So, uh, have a blessed week and let us know what your reflections are and go in peace. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.